Welcome to the Canadian Cultural Centre. Here is the exhibition that I co-curated with Alain Thibault, who is the artistic director of the Electra Festival and Biennial, in collaboration with Catherine Bedard, who runs this exhibition space. We titled it Human Learning, by referring to what we call machine learning, deep learning, or this kind of learning by machines. But uh, we decided to name it Human Learning because this is about time to be taught by the machine. This is the subtitle of the exhibition, What Machines Teach Us. Machines are supposed to finally learn by themselves, thanks to the data, thanks to artificial intelligence. And uh, we, at the opposite, wanted to focus, to concentrate on humans instead of concentrating on machines. On humans, meaning us, living with the machine by having more machines around us, virtual machine, real machine, uh, machines uh, made of steel, so made of code. We wanted to focus on this proximity, this relationship uh, between machines and humans uh, by focusing on the aesthetic of the machine, uh, the art of the machine made by the machine in cooperation with uh, the artist and sometimes we will see with some kind of autonomy. Outside of the Canadian Cultural Center, there is an artwork that finally uh, is at the beginning of the, the exhibition. This artwork is named Four, and uh, the artist, Ratsi, refers to the four of the clockmakers. Uh, that is not the numeral Roman four that we know, but the four of the clockmakers uh, for a matter of uh, balance. Uh, during the 18th century, the clockmakers uh, were also zoos creating some automatons. And finally, the automatons are at the, the origin, at the root of our contemporary robots. This artwork named Liminalis by Louis-Philippe Rondeau uh, is represented by some kind of threshold. Uh, because uh, uh, liminalis in Latin means threshold, and the artwork being named liminal. So this is the idea of some kind of entrance. We enter, we exit, uh, but we also enter the image. And uh, I think that this is some kind of dream that has been shared by tons of movie makers, how to enter the image, how to push the public into the image, how to uh, put the public in some kind of immersion into the image. So this is really the idea of documenting this kind of entrance. And obviously, many people during all the duration of the exhibition played with their own image, with their own body. So this is definitely an artwork that we can talk about, but this is also an artwork that has to be experienced of different ways, ideally, and possibly by being several people. Here is a robot by Bill Vaughan. He gave it to Catherine Dong, and we can see here the duo, the robot and Catherine Dong. And there are some other pictures, some of the photographies inside the exhibition. And the, the idea is finally of some kind of road trip. What happens for a long period of time, crossing a country, Canada possibly, uh, between these two people, uh, these two different people, this human and non-human uh, entity. So uh, these pictures, we can interpret them uh, the way we want. For me, this is definitely the idea of some kind of cinema road trip or pictures uh, taken by a photograph uh, to tell the story that happens between two different kind of people. What happened in, during this journey between these two? Possibly the robot is tied, but not the artist. Possibly here the robot wants to stay here and the artist wants to leave. We don't know, and this is the idea. We never know what could happen, what is happening, what will happen between these two human and non-human uh, different entities. Uh, so this is the idea with this robot 
we don't exactly know who takes care of the other or possibly uh, they both take care of the other. Interference by Matthew Biderman. It refers to Thomas Young, who with an experiment named uh, Double Slit Experience, he proved the wave nature of light. So this artist is really interested in science. Most of the idea of his artwork, they come from science. Even the, the shape of the artwork, these different layers of colors, of rhythm, that refers to uh, some kind of possible waves of the light. Uh, they also pile uh, in, in some uh, uh, wood pile. And the wood pile is a way to assemble nanotechnologies together. So this artwork refers definitely to um, uh, many theory, idea, way to think or to work in the context of science. He's a specialist of this relationship between art and science. And what is very interesting is that this generative artwork uh, has many, many, many ways to look at it. It's these tubes are covered with some dichroic filters. It means even if the colors are continuously evolving, uh, according to the point of view, we see them differently. So there are millions of ways, of points of view, and even of different times. The idea of this interference is that the layers are sometimes synchronizing and sometimes not synchronizing. Douglas Copeland, well known for his writings, including Generation X, but also about his uh, contemporary artworks. This one is named Deep Face, and Deep Face is also the name of an algorithm that a few years ago, a facial recognition algorithm that was supposed to be more efficient by Facebook, more efficient than the one of the FBI. It could be in a certain way reassuring, or maybe not. By having all this graphic element on top of some faces, finally what invented Douglas Coupland is some kind of de-recognition uh, software, de-recognition uh, apparatus. And uh, he also created a photo booth a few years ago in an art fair in New York, and people were very happy to shoot themselves by having on top of their faces something that competed with the recognition software, the facial recognition software of Facebook. So finally, this is a machine, this is an idea, this is an artwork that uh, makes us more possibly anonymous. So, here is another artwork. And this one emerged from a paper, a scientific paper, by Matisse Tesfalde and Xavier Snellgrove. These two artists are also scientists. From most of these artwork emerged some writings, but this artwork is the conclusion, is the consequence of a writing. It's a consequence of a, a scientific paper. And uh, this is the idea of some kind of transition from a face to another. It looks like the aesthetic of artificial intelligence. And uh, this is about uh, automatically uh, reorganizing the pixels. Oh, we saw one artist. We will see soon the other artist. And, and definitely it comes from a face to another, and another face, and another face. And this is the machine that, uh, in a certain way, invents uh, all the images from someone to someone else. David Rugby, very well known for his sound installation. This is a visual and sound installation. Finally, when we look at it, it definitely looks like some kind of minimal artwork. By the way, this is the name of the artwork, Minimal Object with a subtitle that says, with time on your end. Finally, there is time on our end, but there is also some sounds that were hidden by the artist, David Rugby, and that we can activate. So in a certain way, this is an artwork. In another way, this is an instrument. This is an instrument that we have to learn 
how to play that we have to learn by experiencing it because there is uh, no, uh, it's not written uh, anywhere, neither on the label uh, nor on the website of the artist. I even think that the artist, as soon as he finished this minimal object right, that refers to uh, minimal art, uh, learned by himself how to play his own work. So many people came to the exhibition and uh, spent some time to learn from this machine, to learn from this artwork, to learn by experiencing the artwork. Prosperity by Samuel Saint-Aubin. Here are the components, here are some rice grains, and here is the machine. That is taking all of the rice grains to put them here or there. At the end, in a few minutes, hours, depends on the time it will take, the grains will be reorganized uh, in some grids, two grids. But the machine will also take care of preserving the orientation, the initial orientation. So for me, this is definitely the idea of some government or someone being in charge, taking care of some kind of chaos by reorganizing the chaos, but by respecting the orientation of all of this rain race or all of possibly the people. Alpenglow by Sabrina Hatte. Alpenglow is a phenomenon, a natural phenomenon. It happens in the mountains. It could happen in the Alps. It could happen in the Rocky Mountain. At the end of the day, uh, when the sky is clear, there is afar some different colors, different light, and it's beautiful. And this is definitely what is happening right now, right here. Meaning there is a picture uh, that is a virtual space, uh, a, a space totally created by the artist, Sabrina Raté. And on top of it, uh, as a mapping, there is this light of the end of the day that is progressively uh, evolving. So there are different, different layers. There are two, two layers, one printed layer and one light layer, and together they correspond, and they give the artwork some kind of uh, mysterious, I would say, some kind of uh, uh, magic, I would also say. This photography is augmented by the light that is part of the artwork. Soul Shift by Justine Neymar, who shot Alter. She shot the Alter 1 and the Alter 2. Because the Alter 1 exhibited at the Mirai Khan Science Museum of Tokyo had a failure. And this is because of this failure that the artist had the idea to confront the Alter 1, not functioning anymore, the one in the background, and Alter 2. But uh, what is very interesting is, is that the code, the memory, Uh, of the Alter 1 was given to the Alter 2. This is why she called it Soul Shift. There were uh, uh, some kind of uh, transplantation of the soul of one into the other. Because these machines, uh, Alter 1 and 2, uh, are autonomous, equipped with sensors, with some artificial intelligence. They learn by themselves how to move their body, even how to express themselves with some uh, kind of nonverbal language. There is something that is happening when the second understands possibly that his memory, his code, his intelligence, possibly his emotion is coming from very first, the one that is not functioning anymore. This is some kind of art of failure. Here are two pictures by uh, Skawenati, or I should say Kanawake. Her uh, name 
in Mohawk because she comes from the, the Mohawk territory in Canada and she took these pictures in a, a virtual space, virtual place that is named Second Life. We know Second Light. Uh, the idea uh, being to finally refer to tradition. The name of the artwork here is She Gathers the Rain, but also to refer to the technologies, the nowadays technologies, this one being named Satellite of Love. Satellite finally uh, represents contemporary technologies and the possibilities that She Gathers the Rain is more referring to uh, tradition. She mentioned that during the 20th century, most of the pictures of people of the Mohawk community uh, were shot with some uh, uh, traditional costumes. So by refusing uh, to only refer to the past, she decided to take this picture uh, by being her avatar, uh, Skawinati, the avatar, uh, inside Second Life, the virtual uh, space, a virtual place on the internet. So this is why she calls uh, these pictures uh, machinigraphs, like machinima and photographs. And uh, obviously uh, she gathers the rain here, she takes care of the planet, and also as we can see there is a planet and the name is Satellite of Love, meaning referring to the planet uh, of obviously ecology nowadays and the technologies that could help us to uh, take care of the planet. Here is the Dreaming Machine by Grégory Chatonsky. As we can see, there are some servers inside some data centers. The place usually occupied by the machines nowadays. And what is this machine doing? The artificial intelligence of this machine was fed by the artist to rethink another world. And uh, the machine designed some kind of fossils of some animals that never existed. Here are some pictures that the machine also created by being fed with some tons of images. And uh, inside of it, our dreams. This is why it's called the Dreaming Machine. The Dreaming Machine was fed also with 20,000 dreams by human, gathered by some scientists at the University of California. So here, the machine fed by human dreams is uh, also dreaming by itself. The machine invents some new dreams that comes from human dreams, but that no, are not anymore human dreams. Some people told me here that at their break, they uh, were used to coming to sit here, to take the headset and to hear some new dreams. Some dreams that are influenced by some humans, but that are also some new dreams. We create dreams and nowadays machines can dream by just being influenced or, let's say, fed with some human dreams. So here is a wrapper black chain by Émilie Gervais. She sold it to an art collector of her digital platform secured by the blockchain. So this is why she refers to the blockchain. She also refers to uh, the rapper blockchain of the 80s. The question that rises when we see this chain is who could, who would be big enough, tall enough to wear this kind of chain? Who would have enough power? Possibly the blockchain. Uh, and we could also mention that this chain, this kind of rapper blockchain, uh, can't really act on the waves. It can't really act on the real world. And as a matter of fact, uh, the blockchain acts on the virtual world or from the virtual world more and more on the real world. So, Emily Brou and Maxime Marion. The title is Lightning Ride. The artist took these pictures, took these sequences, these uh, uh, non-artist sequences, 
and to gather themselves and to give themselves the same uh, aesthetics, the same style, they decided to uh, put uh, a filter, an oil painting filter. So it refers to painting because of uh, this uh, little tacky aesthetic. And it refers to painting also when we see these faces uh, suffering, this kind of ecstasy uh, that, of course, refers to a uh, painting of the Renaissance. So this artwork being uh, made of some non-artistic uh, sequences all together referring to a practice uh, taving the other. There is a, a very bizarre community that is made of people tasing uh, the others in the US uh, to get a taser and to tase uh, some other people, you have to be tased one time. So there are some taser certification. To get a certification also refers to painting because of its uh, aesthetic. That is some kind of uh, uh, obsessional uh, way uh, to think about painting and also to through the faces of, of these people suffering uh, to the idea of suffering in art history. As we can see, uh, this uh, person right now has the face of someone uh, suffering or someone in ecstasy.